Okay, I have hit go live. As we all know, there's no telling what that really means. You'll notice my setup is slightly different. I have added a microphone, which means I have yet another piece of technology that can get messed up and cause me not to be. I think I'm live. I think I'm live. I might be live. I might be live-ish. I've always wondered if, can I go into the comments from here and then maybe I could see? No, no, I can't. Sadly, that's the, the pain of being on Zoom with Facebook. Zoom doesn't show me Facebook comments, so I don't get to see them in time as you're putting them up there. Some technology, the new microphone um, is added in the hopes, okay, we're gonna get into the show in just a minute, but the reason this is here is because I'm also recording myself on another program that records just my voice. And in theory, I may be able to use this to turn TU New Book Tuesday into a podcast for the Mobile Public Library. I think that would be fun. I think a lot of people would like it. I think it could even help people outside of Mobile because it's popular new books that are coming out that are probably ordered by their library too. Um, and we buy from the exact same big distributors that everybody else buys from. So we probably, I'm, I assume we get them around the same time anyone else would get them. They might get them faster if they're in New York or on the East Coast, but um, for the most part, I think Baker and Taylor's shipping stuff out pretty close together. So I doubt it's that different. Uh, but anyway, new microphone also means I can just barely move. <laughs> I'm kind of trapped in this exact position. But we're going to learn to soldier on because hello and welcome to Tia New Book Tuesday. My name is Lisa and I'll be your librarian. Now let's start our show with uh, remembering that I had to unplug the mouse in order to plug in the microphone. But also, I need to share my screen so that you can see not Zoom, but my Tia New Book Tuesday slides, yay. Okay. Sent. There we go, Tea and New Book Tuesday for March 30th, 2021. Today's books, we are gonna talk about May's hottest pre-orders. So all of these books were pre-ordered by the Mobile Public Library. They are to be released in May. We are likely to get them between now and then. Sorry, excuse me. Um, and many of them may be available as soon uh, as the release date. So you can put them on pre-order now, or we pre-order them. You can put them on hold now, and then you may get them as soon as the release date, especially if you're one of the first people to put them on pre-order, which I would encourage you to do so if you are interested in any of these books. All right, let's talk about what I've been reading. A little while ago, I finished a book called Winter's Bone by Daniel Woodrell. It's very, it's very good. Like it won a bunch of awards. They made a movie out of it with Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I think it's even considered possibly a modern classic. And for good reason, it's a well-told story. I will say, if you have read and enjoyed The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, read Winter's Bone. You're going to recognize a lot of themes. This came out before Hunger Games, and even though there are two different books, I still feel like Winner's Bone had to have somewhat inspired Hunger Games. Uh, so if you love that series, it's worth checking out Winner's Bone. I'm also now reading Joe by Larry Brown. Both of these were recommendations for one of the other librarians here. She and I are playing around with creating a podcast that won't be for Mobile Public Library, but would just be for us personally, where she and I trade back trade books that I love and she reads or that she loves and I read. And she tends to love Southern literary grit lit kind of books. I tend to really enjoy horror. So when I read Winter's Bone, she read The Shining. And while I'm reading Joe, she's trying out The Exorcist. So we'll see how far that goes and whether or not she can make it through The Exorcist. Many people have tried and failed, so not, nothing on her if she can. 
Moving on to today's giveaway. I have them right here. They're right over there, but I'm honestly afraid to pick them up because I have so little movement on my right. But these are the covers. The books are Boys of Alabama by Genevieve Hudson and Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. Uh, I have my descriptions. Boys of Alabama is a bewitching debut novel about a sensitive teen newly arrived in Alabama, falling in love, questioning his faith and navigating a strange power. So it's fiction. Think Like a Monk, which the subtitle is Train Your Mind for Peace, and Purpose Every Day by Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty, social media superstar and host of the number one podcast On Purpose, distills the timeless wisdom he learned as a monk into practical steps anyone can take every day to live a less anxious, more meaningful life, which is an admirable goal if ever there is one. And Think Like a Monk is the actual book. Boys of Alabama is another arc. If you want to win them, Go ahead and put I want to win in the comments below along with your MPL location for pickup. If you have a preference, like you'd want one of these books but not the other one, go ahead and tell me that. Um, and if you don't care either way, then just put I want to win and your MPL location for pickup. I'm going to give those away on Monday because I have kind of a weird weekend coming up. So I will draw them on Monday morning. Coming up here at MPL, if you have not checked out Beanstack, I think you should. It's a lot of fun. There's reading challenges on there for other Mobile Public Library lovers. And honestly, you don't have to be a Mobile to enjoy this. Um, you can enjoy the challenges on Beanstack and win badges and earn badges and things like that. This month's challenge is centered around Earth Day. You, you can discover how to recycle right, ways to clean up your community and decrease pollution and littering to protect the planet's most precious resources. We're also giving away a prize for one Beanstack participant. They will win an indoor planting kit. So if you want to participate, sign up for Beanstack today. All right, time to get into the books. Let's talk about some nonfiction. I'm gonna move, I would move this, but I, I don't have a, there we go. Much better. Okay. Killing the Mob, The Fight Against Organized Crime in America by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Duggar. Um, I don't normally recommend the Bill O'Reilly books, mostly because he's on TV all the time. That is a, an amazing marketing resource. And, as, and so if you're a fan of his, you probably watch him on TV and you know that the book's coming out. You don't really need me to tell you that. But this one is a little different, and I feel like it crosses over with true crime a little. So I wanted to go ahead and let you guys have a heads up that it's coming out. This is part of the best-selling series um, of narrative history books called The Killing Series. Most of them have been focused on an assassination, a single person, or a single event in history. This is a little broader. It covers the mob from the 30s to the 80s. It also discusses major figures on both sides, both the mob and people like J. Edgar Hoover and Bobby Kennedy who tried to take them down. If you're interested in this, it's coming out on May 4th and will also be on audio. All right. The Windsor Diaries, 1940 to 1945, My Childhood with Princesses Margaret and Elizabeth by Alethea Fitzalan Howard. There's no telling how she pronounces that because the British just make everything harder than it needs to be. At any rate, this is Fitzel and Howard's diaries from 1940 to 1945, as advertised. She was a teenager. She was sent to live with her grandfather, who was a Viscount that lived in one of the lodges on the Windsor Castle estate. So her social group included then Princess Elizabeth, now Queen Elizabeth, and Princess Margaret. Um, they became close friends. As I said, they socialized a lot, and she observed the close relationship between all four members of the royal family, including the queen and the king. Uh, this is also a portrait of wartime England, because of course, this is when World War II was happening. If you're interested in the Windsor Diaries, we are also getting it on audio, and it comes out May 4th. All right, Madhouse at the End of the World. This is a crazy story. Absolutely true, of course, because we're nonfiction. It's the blend, 
Belgica's, Belgica's, I don't know the name of the ship, Belgica's Journey into the Dark Arctic Night by Julian Sancton. This is the author of the best-selling and award-winning book, The Boys on the Boat, which is another World War II story. Uh, this is not a World War II story. This is from, I am on the wrong thing. Sorry. This is not by the author of Boys on the Boat. The next book is. This is by Julian Sanctum. Okay, so in August 1897, a Belgian commandant named, I think it's Adrian de Gerlach, de Gerlach, he set sail with a full crew for a three-year expedition to the South Pole. He was, the journey was troubled from the very beginning. At one point, before they'd even cleared South America, They'd run aground and they lost several of their crew members. They were replaced by less experienced soldiers, sorry, sailors. Um, but the commandant still wanted to go on and they ended up stuck in the ice in Antarctica. They were stuck there for a very long time. It was so cold outside that they were stuck in cramped quarters inside the ship. And then winter hit and the sun went away because in Antarctica, the sun is gone during winter. Not very little, just gone, so darkness. This case has been studied by NASA as part of preparation to possibly send ast astronauts to Mars and have them be isolated for long months or years. Uh, it's a fascinating story and the, the author got exclusive access to the ship's logs in addition to all the other exhaustive research he did, they're saying that this is a really harrowing story of hubris and human survival. Anyway, if you're interested in it, we're also getting it in large print. It comes out on May 4th, because almost everything comes out May 4th. Okay, Daniel James Brown was the author of The Boys on the Boat. His new book is Facing the Mountain, a true story of Japanese American heroes in World War II. Okay, so in this, Brown tells the story of four Japanese American families who sent their sons to World War II while the parents were forced to shut the, to close their businesses, leave their homes, and live in internment in camps here in the US. Members of the family also fought in courts for what was right. The description of this story ends by saying, by describing the Japanese Americans' family's efforts this way. Whether fighting on battlefields or in courtrooms, these were Americans under unprecedented strain, doing what Americans do best, striving, resisting, pushing back, rising up, standing on principle, laying down their lives and enduring. As we're discussing the contribution of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in our country. I think this is a really important book to consider reading and learning about the story of the many Japanese Americans who have made sacrifices for the sake of all of our freedom. As you can see, it's um, a hard one for me to talk about. So give me a second. I forgot to tell you I'm drinking my Tazo vanilla bean macaron today. Or I'm trying to. The microphone is very much in the way. Okay, Kirkus gave Facing the Mountain a star a starred review, which as we know, Kirkus uh, only mentions a book to tell you why not to read it, or as one of our librarians explained, but they do recommend reading this one. We are getting it in large print and an audio in addition to the book, and it comes out May 11th. Now for something completely different. Brat, an 80s story by Andrew McCarthy. Uh, this is exactly what you think it is. It's Andrew McCarthy's memoir about the 80s. Um, so it's very much a, a coming of age story set in and around Hollywood, New York and Hollywood in the 80s. He's going to discuss I think the makings of those films, of the John Hughes films that he was in, 
and some of the other films that he was in uh, as part of the Brat Pack in the 80s. Um, I don't know if we have any big reveals because we haven't been teased yet. Uh, but if you remember that era fondly and you'd like to read about it, we are also getting Brat on audio. Uh, it will come out May 11th. All right, let's move on to fiction. We've got some very exciting fiction coming out in May. I'll do it this way. Maybe if I put it on my left, it will be easier. Okay. Starting with a couple of series. Uh, series updates, I should say. We're getting number 12 in Clive Custer and Jack Burrell's Isaac Bell Adventures, which is called The Sepultures. Uh, the final twist by Jeffrey Deaver is book three in the Coulter Shaw series. The final twist comes out May 11th, and The Sepultures comes out May 25th. Moving on to standalone titles. And one I have been so excited for you guys to read that I got to read last year and I really enjoyed Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Okay, so in this book, a man wakes up in a clean, very space age type room. He can't remember who he is, how he got there or what's going on, but there's two other sleeping pods similar to the one he woke up in, woke up in and those two sleeping pods have dead bodies in them. The computer will give him nourishment, but won't let him leave that room until he can remember his name. He will come to know that he is a part of a mission to save humanity. Um, as a part of our last hope or our Hail Mary pass, he was sent into deep space to prevent an extinction level event. I loved this book. I enjoyed The Martian as well, which is Anywhere's first book. And it feels like The Martian in the sense that it's funny and smart and relatively fast paced. I found the science in this one a little harder to understand than The Martian, even though he explains well in both of those books. But in The Martian, I feel like he's explaining more botany and chemistry, which I can wrap my mind around. And in this one, we're into like physics and the stuff that I really, I, my brain just won't. Um, but it doesn't interfere with the enjoyment of the story. Early readers on Goodreads are giving this over 4.5 stars, which is very high. We are getting the large print. Uh, at this time, we can't get the audiobook because it's exclusive to Audible. So basically, Amazon has locked us out from getting the audiobook. So by all means, yell at them for not letting public libraries uh, listen to the audiobook for one of the biggest books of the year. But if you're interested in Project Hail Mary, it comes out on May 4th. All right. A Good Mother by Laura Bez Bezalon? Bezalon. Bezalion. Probably not that last one. This is a thriller. It's about, okay. It starts with a soldier who stabbed. Everyone knows his wife did it. They don't know why. It could have been self-defense. She could have been defending her young daughter. It's also possible she just straight up murdered him. The public defender, Abby, who is defending her, believes in her and wants to get her through the trial and acquitted and back to her daughter and not in prison. But as the trial starts to hurtle out of control in a direction no one was expecting, it will lead to an important question. What does it mean to be a good mother? This is a first novel. It's got too few early readers to know, but for a first novel, that's not unusual. But the press gave it lots of positive reviews. If you're interested in a good mother, it comes out May 11th. All right, The Summer Job by Lizzie Dent. This does sound funny, and it should because it's a romantic comedy about mistaken identity. Uh, Birdie runs from her life straight into the life of her best friend. She's at a Scottish summer resort, and for various reasons, she's pretending to be her best friend who is a wine expert. She is not a wine expert. Uh, she's also falling for the first man she's met in a long time who she really likes, except 
he thinks she's someone else. It sounds like it's set up with all sorts of fun elements. There have got to be many scenes in which she fakes her way through explaining why, which is always fun. Early readers are giving this over four stars. If you're interested in this, which sounds like a fun summer read, there's a lot of summer reads coming out in May, by the way. Uh, this comes out, the summer job comes out May 18th. All right, some more thriller times. The Photographer by Mary Dixie Carter. This is another debut. It's about a photographer who makes her living taking pictures for the elite in New York City. And she, eventually she's hired as a photographer for the Straubs. She's taking pictures for their 11 year old daughter's birthday party. And she realizes she wants to do more than take pictures. She wants to live this family's life. So she begins a plan to move into their lives while realizing that she can manipulate more than just photographs. This looks very interesting. The publisher is putting a lot of work and effort into promoting it. And they've already made an audiobook, which we are buying. All of that's unusual for a first time author. So I think everyone thinks this is going to be a good book. Uh, if you're interested in either the book or the audiobook, it comes out May 25th. All right, Arctic Storm Rising by Dale Brown. Hold on to your butts because this is the beginning of a new series by a best-selling author. Okay. A covert CIA mission goes wrong. And after that, Nicholas Flynn, who was involved in the mission, is exiled to a guard station in Alaska. This is essentially a dead end for his career. But Russian aircraft keep entering the area illegally and for unknown reasons. When one of the Russian planes collides with an American aircraft, Flynn is expected to take a skeleton crew and parachute to the wreckage site to rescue any American servicemen who survived. But the US government isn't telling Flynn everything he needs to know for this mission, and the Russians are equally desperate to get to the site and retrieve confidential technology that was on their aircraft. It's up to Nick to get the Americans out and prevent a nuclear level confrontation between two world powers. I think it's possible Dale Brown knows what he's doing. Very, sounds like a very tense page turning, like world changing drama, action, all sorts of good stuff. If you are interested in Arctic Storm Rising, it comes out May 25th. All right. I'm going to take a drink of tea before I explain why I hate this title. Bear in mind, I don't hate the book. I think it sounds like a fun book. But the title itself, I can't stand. This book is Talk Bookish to Me by Kate Bromley. I just talk bookish to me. I can't do big old no on that one but the plot sounds like fun it's um yeah my first note is I hate this title <laughs> which I didn't need a note for because obviously I remember that real clearly it's, it feels like a reference to the poison song and I ugh, it's it's just not something I want in my life okay but it is about Kara who is a best-selling romance author and a bookstagrammer she likes her life the way it is with romance strictly between the covers of her books. But her best friend is getting married and is bringing big wedding stress into her life and is bringing the first love she had years ago back into her life. She wants to disregard him, but his presence is helping her get past the writer's block that's been plaguing her. And she needs to get this book done because the due date is looming. Is it possible for her to save the wedding her career, and have a happy ending. This already has a rating of over four stars from early readers. If you are interested into the uncomfortably titled Talk Bookish to Me, it comes out May 25th. All right. Those are our books for today. Don't forget, 
if you want to win Boys of Alabama or Think Like a Monk, then I want you to write I want to win and your MPL location for pickup in the comments of this video. Um, if you have a preference between the two books, let me know. If you don't, don't worry about it. On Goodreads, I am going to add some titles I wasn't able to include today, but I think are going to be on the new book flyers, particularly the ones that are audio. Um, if I don't think they fit into another upcoming episode, then I'll put them in that post. I'll probably have that post up later this week. Hopefully. Also, the MPL pre orders newsletter goes along with this thing that I'm making. <laughs> the microphone's really, the fact that I'm recording for the podcast while on Facebook Live is really making my brain just like not want to function. But anyway, the MPL pre orders newsletter goes with this Facebook Live video. It has every book I've discussed today, and you can click on the book's title and go straight to our catalog and put the book on hold. If you have not already subscribed, I would encourage you to do so. The link is in the description. Have a good week, guys. Next week, we will talk about... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, next week, we're going to talk about yellow labels, which here at MPL are thrillers, suspense, crime, and mystery. I will see you then. Okay.